Well, my organizational frenzy for January continues, and it's important to me that I have credibility with you guys, and that I show you that I am actually executing the things that I'm talking about. And so many of you have asked to see how I organize all of my jewelry and things, and I'm gonna show you that momentarily, but I do want to show you that, yes, indeed, I did clean out my junk drawer it is nice and tidy now. I don't have nearly so many pens and things just erupting all over the place. And yes, in the back, I do have my, my hidden tools so that hubs can't find them. Now, this is, my, this is my junk drawer. And then I have another drawer that's kind of hidden in here that I'm getting ready to clean out. And that's this one right here. So this is where I, it's kind of like a, a bill paying station and I'm getting ready to go through that. Now, it's also important, and this is my question of the day, do you find that while I'm in this kind of organizational frenzy, there, my whole house, the entirety of my house is typically pretty chaotic because I'm getting things organized. So there's stuff that I've moved from one place to another. There's stuff that piles up and kind of congregates in one area just because I haven't gotten, gotten to it yet. So there is chaos before there is order. And let me know if for you guys that's true as well and if you're okay with that because this time of year I'm kind of okay with that because I know that I have my end goal in sight. The um, ends justify the means. So now I want to go upstairs and I want to show you one of the most frequently asked questions about how I organize all of my costume jewelry. So let's go upstairs. Well, first of all, don't judge me. I do have lots of costume jewelry. Um, most of it, however, I have not purchased. A lot of it came from my my second mother after she passed, my mother-in-law. People know that I love jewelry, so I am gifted it all the time, so I have a lot of it. And I could have it all just stuffed in a drawer where it's all tangled and not readily accessible, but I was inspired actually by the contractor when we redid our bathroom and the master suite upstairs long after my kids were gone. I lived in a tiny, tiny little space with a postage postage stamp of a bathroom for many, many years, but we redid some things. And it was the contractor who had this idea to put in slat wall or slot wall, and I could then have all of my jewelry on display, and it's really easily accessible in this very tiny spot. This was one of these 1930s and 1940s closet, but not a lot of clothes would fit in here. And if they did fit, it, they just would not be, as I said, readily accessible. So he suggested that we just frame out this space in this organizational paneling system, which is called slat wall. And then you just order the hooks and things and you place them wherever you want to place them. And I can then hang all of my accessories. So this is where I keep all of my jewelry, all of my earrings, all of my bracelets, and other things. Now, right now, admittedly, it is extremely chaotic because I have been extremely busy and I want to share with you guys something kind of exciting. So if the stars are in alignment and if it all works out, um, I'm going to be on the Tamron Hall show this coming Wednesday, and I'm gonna be talking about a number of different things, but they reached out to me, and I was happy to cooperate and collaborate with them. So that's kind of a heads up. Tamron Hall used to be a co-host of the Today Show, and she now has her own show on ABC. In Oklahoma City, it airs, I think, at three in the afternoon, and depending on what your, what your scheduling is, it might air at a different time. So I've been really busy getting a lot of different things done um, in addition to being a little bit under the weather over the holidays. So forgive me because I will, just like my junk drawer, I promise I will show you what this look like, looks like when everything is really, really organized. Now, I have been an adult for a long time and I have collected earrings for a long time, so that's why I have so many. And you guys know that I wear all of them. And it's one of my little small joys of the day is selecting what earrings I want to wear. But I want to show you a couple of other things about this closet. So I had a mirror put in here so I can kind of decide what 
earrings I want to wear with my outfit of the day in here. This little um, area is just a mess. Just don't look at it. Just pretend like you don't see it. It is not normally this messy, I promise. But one of the reasons that I need to clean up this area and have a clean surface is because you guys, see if I can do this. This is actually, this is one of the brilliant things about older homes. This is actually a laundry hamper, a laundry chute. And so when I don't have jewelry on here, I can just throw all of my laundry down that chute and it ends up in my laundry room. So that's kind of a brilliant idea. Actually, I normally use it kind of as, as the top of a dresser because those laundry chutes from way back when are pretty small um, and it's hard to get much laundry down them. But nevertheless, it's a great idea if you wanted to try to incorporate incorporate something like this into your own home. I also have in here, when we redid the bathroom, we made a little crawl space, or I shouldn't say it's not really a crawl space, but it's access to, you can just take these panels off, these plaster drywall panels off, and it will give access to behind my bathtub and all of the plumbing and everything that's there right now. We just added this not too long ago when I had some issues, um, that gift that kept on giving, that Arctic blast of last February. So many people's pipes burst, cause all sorts of problems. It took forever us to be able, forever, forever for us to be able to get a plumber out here to do this, but we had to do some end arounds and some plumbing work. And so we put in this little access door so that we could, in the event of future issues, be able to access the plumbing in the back. But this works brilliantly, this slat wall. It's actually, a commercial paneling system. So if you if you shop at the mall in places like Claire's or uh, any of those kind of stores, then you see that they just have these little hooks and things of that nature and they have jewelry hanging on them or belts or whatever. And so we just employed this same thing. Since it works so brilliantly and you're probably saying, so what does this have to do with gardening? Well, it works so masterfully here that when we cleaned out our garage, I also put some of this same slat wall in the garage with really, really large, sturdy hooks. And we can hang everything from bikes to garden hoses to my favorite garden tools, anything like that. We can hang those in the garage on extra sturdy, extra special different kinds of hooks. So you can get all different varieties of hooks for these and you can get them just, it's readily accessible pretty much everywhere. And if, if it's, uh, if the price point for the uh, section of slat wall is a little too high for you, I think you can probably even find it at renovation stores, at um, Salvation Army, different places like that. You could find it used, which of course is something I always try to do first. So uh, a lot of the jewelry in here has special meaning to me because it belonged to um, one of my two mothers or my mother-in-law. And so when I wear them, I not only enjoy the beauty of the piece and the composition of the outfit and how it all goes together, but it reminds me of them. And I love that little memory touch point. And speaking of memory touch points, I want to show something to you that's really, really special to me. Um, many of you have asked, so I'm going to answer this question. Many of you have asked because I refer to my first mother and my second mother. Well, my first mother died when I was five. She was just 36. She died of asthma and left my father with seven children from aged one up until, and, and the oldest was 12 at the time. My father then remarried um, a surgical nurse who had been a nun and they had three more. And happily, I am still very close with all of my brothers and sisters. We stay in constant touch and I'm very, very fortunate in that regard. But I don't have a lot of anything tangible that belonged to my first mother. It, um, it was just difficult to talk about at that point in time. And in that era, it wasn't like it is today where you put everything out in the open. A lot of things were then, were then I think, just kind of 
fluffed over or, or skirted over so that it wouldn't cause additional heartache and pain. So that's kind of a personal thing, but I wanted to share with you one of my most prized possessions, and it's this tiny little tortoise coin purse. And this was one of the things that my first mother made for me when she was in one, uh, she was in and out of the hospital a lot, not only having children, but also because of her asthma. And so whenever she went into the hospital, my dad would bring us back little things from her when we would miss her. And this is one of my most prized position, possessions. I have a, a red one and my sister have, has a turquoise one. And this is one of the things that my first mother made for me. So I've got all of these, these little, um, not only jewelry, but they're things that mean a lot to me. And I often do something, Stuart will tell you this because I've, I've said it in front of him and I let all sorts of people do it. I'll say, would you like to shop my jewelry closet? And they'll come up and I'll say, just pick out something that you like or whatever. And if it's not something that's near and dear to me, if then I just will gift them something that they have selected and I've done that a lot over the years and I've given lots of costume jewelry and and things like that to other people which then keeps my jewelry in constant rotation but this is like 30 years of stuff that I have gathered over time and as you know I wear all of it. So periodically I go through and I really clean some of it out. Um, my friend Jenny is the bead buyer for Hobby Lobby nationally and so she has made a lot of things for me. We've made some things together so I have a lot of this stuff. But hopefully that answers your question on how do I organize all of my jewelry and this is how I do it and it could definitely be neater but even when things are kind of chaotic it's still fairly easy for me to access and it's all about accessibility this year making things easier to access so I'm a little bit more efficient and a little bit more effective so you might try this at home getting a section of, of slat wall or some kind of equivalent so that you could kind of simulate the same kind of thing in your own jewelry organization. So there you go. There's another organizational strategy for this January of 2022. Well, as always, here's my fashion epilogue for today. My earrings, which by the way, I think are getting ready to make their national TV debut, are my new favorites for this year, Atrios Tile inspired earrings. I got these from atrios.com and Stuart, would you put a link above so everybody uh, can, re can source them. Um, my top is Nike. I have had this forever. It was given to me by my friend Jenny for Christmas one year and I love it. I love the fact that it's got uh, these kind of hand warmer sleeves that are kind of included in the top itself and I like its bright and vibrant color. My leggings are Lululemons. This is kind of highbrow for me, but these were a gift to me from my kiddos last Christmas. I love them. And my shoes I have also had for ages and ages, but they still remain as comfortable as they were on day one, and these came from Anthropology. So there you go. There is my outfit of the day.